All right, guys, I've been having all kinds of problems with my furnace. So I, I was going to show the control system I made to finally to finally make it work. Um, this is the control system I made. I don't know how good you can see that. But there's a little LCD screen on there with a readout and tells me what's going on. And uh, these two are the power supplies. They're uh, isolated power supplies. And then uh, that little chip there is a optocoupler which isolates my microcontroller from the relays. And uh, the relays, well the main problem is, uh, well I have all kinds of problems with this furnace, but uh, the main problem is this. It's a self-igniting electronically controlled furnace, so there's no pilot light. Right, so uh, this right here, when it goes to kick on, is like thousands of volts to make a spark to ignite the pipe to ignite the the gas. And uh, the problem is that this control box locks up. It locks up after you know, like once or twice or three or four times a day, and then uh, you have to turn the power completely off. To the furnace to reset it and then it'll work again but until you turn the power off it just stops working you know because it's that this control box locks up so i got sick of being cold and uh so i got made this control box and what this control box does is for one thing it's got a temperature probe that uh kicks on the furnace blower when it gets to the right temperature and yes, I got a, I left the safety temperature thing on. So if for some reason my device or, or my circuit doesn't kick on the, the furnace blower, this over temperature thing will flip and cut everything off. So there is a safety backup. <clears throat> but uh, so it does that. And also it cuts the power to this box so it resets it you know and it's got a timer well that's the temperature for well I gotta be careful where I touch that's the temperature for the the blower to be kicked on but this left number on the top is the counter for how many times it's had to reset and uh, this right number is how many minutes it's been since the blower kicked on so if the blower doesn't kick on in 10 minutes is basically that this box is uh has locked up and it's not kicking the burner on anymore so it just resets it so you know and so it starts all over now I had a lot of issues with this design you know it's fairly simple you know three relays and a temperature probe and but it's pretty it was pretty difficult because this is thousands of volts to make a spark to ignite the burner. Now that thousands of volts goes through this frame and through the mains voltage. So my first try at this, every time it would kick the burner on, that high voltage would get to my uh, microcontroller and make it glitch out and lock up and do weird things. So it was a learning experience on how to isolate everything. And that's why I got these uh, these power supplies or isolated power supplies. And I had to add the optocoupler to isolate, just completely isolate my microcontroller from, from everything. Because it's, that high voltage, I, it was just getting everywhere. You know, it was getting through everything. And then I got to the point where, yeah, I could... Uh, I could hook a USB cord to my microcontroller and then uh, hook that to the computer to have it uh, print out information to me about what's really going on. But I found that if I hook the computer USB cord to the microcontroller, even with all this isolation stuff I've got going now, if I hook the USB to the, uh, to the computer, 
it uh locks up when the when the electric spark kicks on so it's so that electric that high voltage is going through the whole mains line system and through the computer and through the USB cord <laughs> so I got to the point where I couldn't even hook it to the computer so that's why I had to put this little screen to have a little readout of what's going on because I can't hook it to the computer to see what's going on because of so that that uh, negates the all the isolation I got going on so yeah it's been a learning experience on isolation and uh, there's a little plug socket right there I made which uh, that's for later because uh, you know I've got my custom made uh, thermostat which goes in with these wires here that run through the wall and stuff but later on this uh, little port here is made for a little uh, uh, wireless module so I want to make my thermostat wireless and so it's not reliant on the wires going through the wall and I can move the thermostat to what to the room I'm concerned about the temperature in you know because right now the thermostat's stuck in the living room and I don't even really use my living room so uh but yeah this all works pretty good now finally uh, I had a couple bad days <laughs> because of that because I mean that when that circuit locks up it was you know I get home from work and it's 30 degrees in here well here's my custom made thermostat uh, I got two different temperatures one from while for one for the times that I'm at work and a different temperature from when I'm at home this is the temperature probe right here but uh, yeah this is gonna get made wireless so it can be moved to a different room and it's not just in the living room so yeah I just wanted to make a video on all this stuff I've had to work on over the last several days all right later